The other day, a friend of mine asked me to make them a house number sign. So, I came up with this. Let me show you how I made it. Now, I wanted this sign to be durable and weatherproof and require practically no maintenance. So, instead of using wood, I decided to use this material, PVC boards. For the sign numbers, I found these ceramic tiles online. I think they're going to work out pretty well. Now, I've laid these ceramic number tiles out on the backboard, and I want to cut this board roughly to size. It's pretty good width-wise, and I'm going to make it a little longer to accommodate the trim molding I'll be putting around here. Using the power miter saw, I'll cut the backboard to length. Now, for the frame or border of the sign, I'm going to use this 1x2 version of the PVC material. I marked the trim so that it will be approximately the same length and width as the backboard. Then, cut it to length. Alright, so let's put this down here and see how it looks next to the tiles. Not bad, but I think this is a little bit thick or a little bit heavy in relation to the tile. So what I want to do is cut bevels on these two edges. Now I'm going to cut the bevel on these edges using my router table. If you don't have a router table, you could use a handheld router or even a plane to do this. This bevel router bit fitted with a ball bearing guide will do all the cutting work. Before I begin though, I want to set up the machine properly. First by positioning the safety guide just above the top of the workpiece. Then by installing these feather boards that will help keep the material firmly in contact with the router table surface. With everything set up, all I have to do is pass the trim across the bit on both the top and bottom edges. Now, normally, I would glue ceramic tile to a surface using a thin set mortar. But because this is a plastic material here, I'm not sure how well that would work. So instead, I'm going to use this epoxy. Now, to make sure that these tiles are properly aligned, I've clamped a straight edge here at the top, and then I'll just push the tiles up against it. This two-part epoxy comes in an easy-to-use, hypodermic-like dispenser that automatically measures out equal amounts of resin and hardener. These two components are then mixed thoroughly together. Once the epoxy is completely blended, it's applied to the backs of the tiles, and the tiles are pressed firmly into place. First the numerals, then the border tile. This epoxy is quick setting, about 30 minutes. Once the tile is firmly bonded, I mark the frame sections by holding them next to the tile and marking the interior corners. I then cut 45 degree miters on both ends. Do a final test fit, then glue the frame sections in place using the same epoxy I used on the tile. Just to make sure nothing moves while the epoxy is setting, I secure the trim in place using a pin nailer. The small holes are easily filled with a bit of exterior spackle. If you remember, at the start of this project, I intentionally made the backboard slightly oversized. Now that the tile and border are securely in position, I'll trim the backboard flush with the frame using a table saw. And here is the finished product. The number sign can be mounted directly on the side of the house using rust-resistant screws or mounted on a stake driven into the ground. The stake is made from a piece of the 1x2 I used for the frame. First I measure and mark what will be the pointed end, then cut the point using a handsaw. Next I drill countersinks and clearance holes. Attach the stake to the back of the sign and drive the stake into the soil. I've got two words for this project, classic and classy.